Welcome back to uh, Microsis Workshop um, for the next installment of the SE5A version 2 build. Um, let me get down onto the build board straight away. And as you can see, we've made some uh, pretty good progress. Um, the next step, because we've got the aircraft almost all complete, is to install the electronics which go into the nose mainly um, but before we do that uh, we need to attach the control horns to the elevator and the rudder um, so that we can hook up the control rods and uh, hook those up to the uh, the receiver that's got onboard servos so here we go p27 28 29 and 30 make up the control horns and if we just remove those from the sprues just get the, uh, the aircraft out of the way for now so you can see so there are our two control horns and then if they have a couple of bases, we keep them in place. Go. So let's make sure we get these hooked up in the right direction. So this, the blue base, it's going to go on the the blue face of the uh, of the rudder on there. So if we put that like so, we need the silver to us again. We need the Over facing upwards, the, the printed side, I should say. It's actually a grey. There we go. So just pop the the base of the control horn through the uh, through the lozenge there. Okay, presto. Our uh, our control horn is made, and. There should be a slot already available there for the control horn to slot into, which it does. Quick dry fit. And then all I'm going to do is add some glue onto that base. There we go. Then install it. He said, it's easy as that. <laughs> Job done. There we go. And then the next one goes onto the elevator. That way. So that sits on that side. So everything should orient orient it. Okay. I'm gonna be daring and just add the glue. There we go. Over. that into the slot there okay now let the glue dry off on both of those 
And whilst we do that, before we install any radio gear or electronics, um, I would implore you to test it out first. Um, what you don't really want is to install your electronics and then find out once you've installed them that they actually don't operate as you need them to. So whilst you have your electronics out of the aircraft, um, it's a good idea just to uh, get it bound to your transmitter and make sure everything is working and, uh, and you're happy with how it is all set up. So there's our receiver. Here is our transmitter. There we go. And I've already bound these together. Um, it sometimes, certainly with the, these little units, um, it sometimes takes a while. And uh, I'd recommend getting at least three to six meters between you and the receiver um, when you're binding. For some reason, distance uh, distance helps. Uh, and also to um, get away from any interference. So things like um, electric fans or uh, you know, obviously things like uh, fans and computers and the like. Um, and uh, any metal as well. Just stay away from, uh, from any metal. And it reduces the possibility of interference. So anyway, we're going to switch this. I'll switch my transmitter on. Wait for that to beep. And switch my receiver on. That's ready to operate. So I've got my... I've actually on this... Uh, transmitter I'm able to assign channels so normally the rudder would operate on the throttle um, from side to side but um, because this is a three channel model um, the rudder is also um, a directional control um, so we want it operating on the a stick that I've got elevator operating to so that's the rudder control that's the elevator control. Everything's working nice and smoothly. The only other thing I've got to check is uh, whether the motor runs. Um, with regards to the uh, um, the control setup, um, I'm fortunate on here, as I said, that I'm able to assign channels. So I've assigned um, ailerons to rudder, and that allows me that control there. It immediately switches the, uh, the control over onto that stick. Um, you can get to that uh, um, situation as well with, with older radios. I've got a, a DX6i um, too, and I uh, mix between rudder and aileron um, so that uh, I get 100% movement on rudder when I'm using the aileron stick. So that works um, equally as well. Right, let's plug this motor in. Uh, red, is, red is right. Red is right. Let's see if see if that uh, works. So, well, that's interesting. No throttle. Um, there is a little trick that you can use if that happens, where you get no throttle. Uh, use your trim tab and bring that all the way to the bottom, and then that usually does the trick. Then you can move your trim tab up. The motor starts running on its own, so you want to just bring that down until it stops, and away we go. There we are. So um, the other thing to check, obviously, once uh, once you've got it bound, you're happy with the motor, um, is that all of your uh, trims, especially for obviously elevator and uh, rudder, are central, um, so that when we install onto the uh, the aircraft we can set all of our uh, control surfaces to a neutral position before we start uh, flying and trimming the aircraft um, so uh, so there we go happy with that right let's disconnect everything move everything to one side then we can get to install our uh, our receiver now um, you should Within the kit, if 
you've got the or that came with the receiver you should have some of these little um basically uh, uh attachment pads for the uh, for the receiver itself um usually you get two you only need one one for the uh, the spares box um and let's just i don't use I like to use a knife on here because it's uh, got quite a bit of gum just put a fresh blade on so um put that to one side don't need that now when installing the uh, the receiver um avoid putting the uh the open cogs at the end of the worm drives anywhere near those um, those pads um, because obviously if they get uh, stuck on them then they're not going to turn uh, possibly overheat and cause some problems and the other thing that i'd recommend is that let's put the pencil you cut out a little bit of the pad um, basically where there's a a raised area round where the uh, motor connector and the, um, the power cable are um, and that just makes it settle e more easily on the uh, on the surface so just let's just mark it's actually just putting an indent in there not because I'm drawing on it but, uh, so scissors just cut out I think I'm gonna to have to use my knife to finish that off there we go so let's make sure it's that's fine I have got a bit of overhang at the back there. If I want to be really good about it, I can trim off that area too, which I will do. And then just peel off one side of the backing paper and put that, put that in place Try to keep clear of those gears there we go the other thing I do recommend is that you neatly um, just wind up the uh, the power cable just so it's nice and neat uh, and it's easy to manage then um, once inside the uh, inside the aircraft so let's bring on the machine and what we're going to do is put this little receiver into the cavity that we have in front of the aircraft and slide it towards the back so it sits around about there in the aircraft so make sure the, all the sticky is stuck down as much as possible to the PCB and then removing the other side of the film and then installing this into the aircraft the position we want notice how i've offset it slightly to the right and um, that's just to make sure that we um, expose both of these um, servos enough within this gap here 
um, for the uh, control rods coming through. So now I can just press it down in place. And that should hold nice and firm. And the other thing I'm going to do is this power cable. I'm going to actually create a little divot underneath the uh, the motor point. I'll actually just slot that power cable underneath. And that actually just keeps it out of the way of the gears in the uh, on the um, on the servos themselves. So uh, that's just a, like a neat little trick that I use on every build just to manage the uh, the cable. Excellent. Right. Uh, next step um, is to hook up the control rods. So, here we go. So we have uh, in the kit two control rods. Both are very, very similar. Um, they, they're too long for the uh, the aircraft at the moment. We cut them down, and they have uh, two very similar ends to them as well, um, with a Z bend at the end of each and a an adjustment loop as well that allows you to make some finer adjustments once they're installed. The only difference is that that Z bend on one is perpendicular to the loop and on the other is in line with the loop. So I don't know if you can see that there. Um, but that basically means the one that's in line um, is the for the rudder and the one that is perpendicular is for the elevator. So that's how it goes. Now there's several steps to installing these. Firstly we need to make sure we've got the right length for each and that we've got them going to the right servos so here's our rudder control rod we're going to just move that through oh when it came of course it was going to come out <laughs> Installing the rudder, and uh, what I'm going to do is hook the rudder up, and then we'll do some uh, some measurements, and uh, then be able to uh, shape it and cut it to length. So, first of all, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but I can bend this. Uh, control horn to a point where I can actually just slot the uh, the Z bend through you'll notice that the the U bend there um, is obviously facing downwards I've got the aircraft upside down so um, so there we go so we've got the rudder hooked up now uh, The rudder on the on the uh, uh, receiver is on the the right hand side here. So what I'm going to do is the uh, the servo arm on the rudder itself, or on the on the servo itself, has three holes um, in a row along the. Uh, the top of this what we term the servo arm probably see them there um i always tend to use the first hole um the center hole is quite small uh, the um the the furthest hole uh, is the the same size i believe but i tend to use that um that one obviously keeps the uh, control rod shorter um therefore saving weight i guess is the plan so what I'm going to do is just hold the control rod where I think it should be bent to go through that servo hole. 
which means I'm looking for my rudder to be in a neutral position. And trying to line up where I'm holding it with the hole in the servo. So if I have it there, that looks like I've lined up. It looks like it's kinking off uh, to the right from where I'm looking at it. So if I just pull a little in and line it up again, that looks better. So I'm just going to hold it there and just put a small bend. Not huge, so that uh, I can't feed it back through. Then I've got that bend to indicate where it uh, it should be bending through. And then I'm just going to remove the rod from the aircraft, just reversing the steps that I've used to put it in there. then whilst it's out of the aircraft just hold it at that point make sure it's the bend is perpendicular to the uh, the, the u bend and the uh, the z bend at the end there and then just Actually, increase the angle of the bend through 90, and in fact, probably another 15 degrees. So you get that sort of that sort of shape there. Then I'm going to remove the rest of the rod, um, leaving a good probably. Let's measure it. Let's be let's be super accurate. I mean, probably around about six or seven millimeters of tail there. May come in handy at a future a future date. Hmm, itchy nose. So let's install that now. This is always the fun bit, getting the hook through. Amazing con. <laughs> oh, there we go. And then literally just bending the the rod itself, just push it through the hole in the servo. There we go. And then whilst that hook that's hooked there, we can then hook it up at the rudder end. Ta-da. So, looks fairly neutral to me at the moment. So that's good. That's good. That's good. So, on to the elevator. Same system. Now, if you notice that your control wire is slightly curved, just, just, um, between finger and thumb, just draw it through and bending it in the opposite direction, and that should straighten it out. Okay, so in we go. Pull that through. Hook it up. Okay. 
Little tiny one. Those holes on the uh, the control holes. I'll have a look at that. It may or may not make it through to the uh, final product. So, so we've got our elevator. So using my needle nose pliers, let's just. I reckon that's good. So that just bends in the, in the same direction as we did the last one. Um, there. On the hook. Draw that out. Complete the bend. Making sure it's once again it's ninety degrees to the direction of the U bend at the end. And just removing leaving a bit of a tail there. that back through Okay, hook it up and install. We seem to have quite a lot of up elevator on that. So I'm going to de rig. Try and shorten it slightly. I could have done it through the U bend, but I prefer whilst I've uh, whilst I'm able. See if that makes any difference. Well, still a little bit of up elevator, but not too bad. And something maybe we can take out in the trim. Um, or if uh, push comes to shove, um, we can actually uh, make the adjustment on the, uh, the U bend there. So there we go. That's our receiver installed. Um, we can just check. 
with everything still operating correctly. I can find the battery. <laughs> Which I can't. Oh, there it is. Just make sure we've got everything around the right way. So, elevator. So the elevator needs reversing. The rudder seems fine. Excellent. Good. So that's all as it should be. Now, next thing is to put the uh, the motor in. So we will need the motor mount. I have in here just a it's a simple plywood plate. Um, but it's designed uh, to sit in front of the aircraft, just there. Let's just get that out of the way. Let's put it through there where it will exist normally and place that again noticing something a little unusual which is that it seems to be a little bit too long oh i know why no that's fine let's get to it install the motor it should be be fine. Okay, so motor, once again, I like to tidy up the, uh, the wire just so it's nicely wound, easy to manage, and uh, hopefully keeps out of the way of the, uh, the gearing. So the motor in the SE5 sits upside down, That's so it goes into the uh, motor mount like so. So it literally sits in the aircraft like that. Um, all we've got to do to secure it in place is add some yuhu. That means it's removable should we need it to be um, using lighter fluid. So just a blob on each of the, uh, the wings of the motor mount. Sorry, the gearbox, I should say. Um, and then SE5A, there should be some etched, laser etched writing on there. That should be facing up. Because the you'll notice that the, the whole cut for the motor is at, at a slight angle. And that provides some uh, side thrust for the, uh, for the aircraft, which is uh, definitely needed. So that's sits like so make sure that it is flat against the ply motor mount and once that's in we have one more part that goes on there and this is a little cover that sits uh, on top of the motor and it's essentially where the uh, the battery lies once that's installed. That's this little piece here, B33. And it's got some scores on it that allow you to bend the edge, edges down. And then there are some slots in the motor mount itself. That actually just sits on like so. Or is it definitely not? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, let's just add a little bit of glue. 
tack this on just along the edge where it touches plywood and put in place Now, what did I say? Red is right. So, make sure that the red wire goes into the right hand socket of the motor mount. Now, um, it doesn't matter if you get it the wrong way around, nothing's going to uh, blow up or burn out. Um, it just means that the motor won't turn in the right direction. So, um, when you fire out of shot, when you fire up your rear. Uh, uh, your motor if you've got the prop on uh, the aircraft will go backwards which is not ideal and then you have to open everything up and uh, swap it over so i'm just going to plug in the motor there we go and i'm actually going to test it before we go any further so switch that on Plug it in and that looks fine. What I want is for the um, the the actual prop shaft to be turning anti-clockwise. Um, that way, the I know the motor is going to give us forward thrust. So um, there's the there's the prop that we're going to put on. So that needs to rotate. As I look at it that way, um, so red is right. Good. Unplug again, and our next task is to actually get the uh, the motor mount onto the uh, the aircraft. So that requires a little bit of cable management we're going to dry fit it first just to make sure everything sits where it should do so we've got the motor installed we need to manage this wire so that it uh, avoids impacting on the uh, on the servos um, our mount is going to slot in at the back there um, and come into contact with the uh, uh, two front um, protrusions on the um, on that forward former so uh, that's how it all sits i've brought the battery cable up through one of the slots in the uh, ply motor mount um, and all we need to do now is tack this down um, it doesn't need to be heavily glued in. Um, all that all you need is a uh, small blob of the yuhu on each of the contact points. So that's um, we'll put one at the back here, almost like a spot weld, if you like, just at the back, and then I'm going to put two to the those front that onto the tops of this the front former there and there and then do the usual uh, bring everything into contact so that we transfer glue from one area to another one surface to another like so and then just Bring apart, let that uh, dry for a little while. And while we do, I'm just going to unplug the motor again. And just tighten up that wind on there. It's uh, unwound a little, so just make it easier to manage when it's uh, 
and everything's installed. So, let's pop this back in. That's not click it. Red is right. Battery cable up through. And we just pop the mount in place so it should hold. There we go. And if we ever need to get inside there all we have to do is put a little uh, of the lighter fluid on the contacts there and the whole thing should come off or fold up and then we can get a little at the back and uh, hey presto it's off so with that on let's just tuck that out of the way for now i just want to make sure that our hatch sits nicely on the aircraft. Yeah. That looks good. It looks like where it should be. Very happy with that. So that done. And with our tail all installed or the controls all installed on the tail and um, the next thing we can do is actually there's a little bit of rigging um, that uh, that goes on on the uh, on the rear and now we've got the, um, uh, the the controls in place it's much easier for us to uh, to actually install so let's get our rigging head on start thinking about how we're going to do this so there are just a little bit of wire there are a couple of holes that were laser cut in one side of the skid I'm just going to press through to the other side there and there um, there are a couple of holes we pushed through that's the uh on the tail there and there we already did that during the installation but we'll just make sure that those holes are still in existence and then there should be a couple of holes in the vertical stabilizer as well let's make sure they're available to us Good. Now we'll start on the underside by just pop our needle threader through one of the holes. And drag some of our rigging wire through. And just knot that. Our stop or not. <laughs> there we go, just cut the tail off. There we go. Right through, and then we want to take this through. This is the upper one, so we want to take the upper one through the rearmost hole of the horizontal stabilizer. Just 
Pop our threader through. Back. Up onto the tail. Just finish through to the top. Goes. through let's flip her over and then back through the same hole we started from here we go It should have a second piece of this stuff. And just repeat the process for the other holes. Don't get confused. In fact, pop a, another stopper knot in the end. Go and cut the tail off without cutting the stopper knot off. Let's hope. I've probably said it before, but um, this rigging wire does require quite a fresh blade. This is when I realise I rigged it all. You know, I think I have. <laughs> right, let's start again. So, take it all back. <laughs> well, I'll leave that one in there, the one I did first, and we'll crack on with this one. And the lower one should go in the rearmost. Sorry about that. If you if you followed my instructions and then realised you've done it wrong as well. It's all good practice, especially if you're going on to build a uh, a Bristol, which uh, the rigging's a little more uh, complex on that. Or maybe by then. You've got the Felix stow out, and that could take days to rig.
make sure it's not getting tangled around everything. Final one, nearly there, nearly caught up with ourselves. Right, it's quite a nice position like that. It works quite well. So, make sure we don't. I suppose you continue that round, couldn't you? No, you couldn't. Don't be silly, Mr. Porter. This is a two part process. <laughs> oh dear. It's good to laugh about it. Okay, to the top, to the top. Next one. And through the last hole, which is the first hole. There we go. Right, now, to tension all of these up, we just need, let's just... Control horn slipped through. Here we go. To tension those up. What I'm actually going to do is just tie these two pieces together that we've just threaded through. You see, tie them a little bit further away so we've got a loop. Then I'm going to use the weight of the aircraft um, to actually tension those uh, those two up. If only I had threaded it correctly in the first place. Let's cut that bit off. So I've just got a little tangle down the uh, where they where they come out. But, uh, it was looping round everything. So um, what I'll do is I'll as I said tie a knot in the end here and then tension this all up by hanging the aircraft from a nail or something similar um, using the weight of the aircraft. Show you that but if I bring it down there using the, the weight of the aircraft itself um, to uh, to tension them whilst the glue actually sets. So I'll just add a couple of dollops of glue to uh, the, um, the the first and last places that the uh, the rigging goes through, um, and uh, and then just wait for that to set. Um, so that's really. Um, the, the last bit, let's just get that nose on, that's the last bit before we actually put the um, uh, the prop on, or the prop stickers on the prop and then the prop on, 
and then we go and test fly. Um, so that will be the next episode. Um, so as for now, thanks ever so much for uh, for watching this. I hope you've been able to get to this stage um, too with your build, and uh, and hopefully uh, next time we'll be able to uh, show you it flying. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.